Hello everyone, welcome into my workspace. Today I am so excited or delighted to get to bring to you the delightful daffodils portion of the hashtag journal jigsaw garden story collaboration that's going on hosted by Rachel Bella Crafts and guest designer Angela Kerr. So today we are at uh, April 2nd. The collab goes on until April 15th, if you didn't already know that. Uh, myself and Hilltop View Journals are bringing to you delightful daffodils. And this time I am bringing to you the bright and shabby version. And Suzanne from Hilltop View Journals will be talking about rustic and grungy daffodils. I'm so excited to see uh, what she has in store for you. First ways we can really add some brightness to our projects. Not that they're not already bright enough, so this definitely isn't necessary. But it's something you can do to add a more bright and uh, shabby feel is add some ink. And ink comes in way more colors than brown. So if you're used to seeing vintage photo, walnut stain, and tea dye, Get that out of your system if you like color. If you want to go more bright and shabby, you can use any color. And you don't even have to use Distress Ink. You can use any ink that you have in any color that you like. So I've got some squeeze lemonade here. And we're just going to go around the edges and add some brightness to these tags. Like I said, not that they need it, but look at the difference that makes there. We're just going to accent the bright and cheery delightful portion of these daffodils and if you don't like going quite as bright as squeezed lemonade you could always go in with fossilized amber which is a little darker in color and um, I'm just going to use the same ink dabber here we'll just dab that out and go in here uh, let's do this one so there we go you can see that is definitely just adding a little more color to the edges here. Now to get the shabby feel, when I think of shabby, like shabby chic, um, I do print most of my papers on an off-white cardstock. So you can see that is already going to give it a little bit of a shabby feel. And what I like about it is that it kind of softens the images um, quite a bit. And you can still go in with your ink and brighten them back up or even go for uh, the browns and go in a little more grunge. But we're not talking about grunge in this video. Uh, you can see I do kind of have a, an eclectic taste. I like a little bit of all of it. And I'm really enjoying this fossilized amber. I think it accents these flowers really nicely. If you're not a very good fussy cutter, I am definitely not great at it. Your ink is your hero. <laughs> it will save the day every single time. It will help you out tremendously. You can go in and add this nice border around for some great interest, contrast, and brightness. And it hides all of those edges uh, where you might have missed or not cut straight or anything like that. But I think when you use these colors, whatever color it is, it definitely adds to the brightness and um, really gives you that contrast, which I love. Okay, so we have everything inked. Some of these I had already inked with some bundled sage. You can see that's that green. And I think that is a really good shabby chic kind of a color as well. Shabby chic to me is more kind of a frosted color, a muted color, um, maybe something with like a whitewash, or it can just be some more pastel colors. It's also kind of a pretty type of a deal, like you put your lace and your ribbons and all the things. Uh, but again, shabby chic might mean something totally different to you or to someone else. Um, so we'll just go with, uh, you know, delightful daffodils. We'll go bright and we'll do some things a little bit shabby here as well. So the next way I really like to brighten things up is with Nouveau Drops. And if you've never used Nouveau Drops before, they are absolutely fantastic. Let me grab my favorite color. So there's several different types of Nouveau Drops and there's so many different videos on Nouveau Drops. So I'm not gonna get into it too much, but I will give you just some basics. Uh, these ones here that I have are Glitter Drops, Crystal Drops, and Jewel Drops. The Crystal Drops come in a clear. This is sort of like glossy accents. And you know, some people say, isn't that just the same thing as Stickles? Sort of, but not really. Uh, Stickles is kind of a, um, I think like a larger sized glitter when it comes out. It definitely has its place. I love both, uh, but I use them each differently. 
When I'm accenting flowers and things like that, I definitely go for Nouveau. When I'm accenting wings, like butterfly wings, I have this saying, things with wings need to sparkle. When I'm doing that, I definitely go stickles. Uh, but I do like the glitter drops from Nouveau as well. It's just a different size of glitter and it kind of comes out um, I don't know, just not as sparkly. It, it still sparkles, just it's just not as loud, uh, which there's sometimes a place for loud. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, use the ones that I pulled here. And this one here is a glitter drop, and it is called Summer Sunrise. How perfect for these flowers, right? Uh, so sometimes what I like to do is just do the centers of the flowers. Now, these are daisies. They're not delightful daffodils, but that's all right. We'll give them a few accents too. And the beauty of Nouveau is that when you do the drops, you can even make your own enamel dots. Um, they just level perfectly on their own. Like you don't have to do anything to make them round or flat or any of the things. Uh, they don't keep the peaks usually. So that's really great. So we'll go ahead and do the centers of these ones. Whoops. And if you mess up like that, just scrape it off. Use your wet wipe and start again. <laughs> All right, here we go. Right in the centers of these daffodils. And what this does is it gives them some more texture and some more interest. So they're gonna have a little bit of sparkle there in the center and I think that's really great. All right, so let's sparkle the center of these daisies in this one. It's hard to stop once you get started with Nuvo. It's like, ooh, what else can I do? <laughs> I love it. Okay, I know we're supposed to be focusing on the daffodils, but daffodils and boots kind of go hand in hand. So let's put some glitter on these boots. Oh, this one. I haven't used this one in a while. Looks like it's a little... Nope. We're going to skip using this one. I think I need to... Uh, maybe shake this one up or something. So we'll set that one aside. Um, let's try the... Where did it go? Let's try the stickles and we can see the difference here. Now this one is bright yellow, super bright. I think it would be great for some of the dots on these. And you don't need to use a lot. A little goes a long way. Oops, let's stay in frame, sorry. Putting it where I can see it doesn't help you see it. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I'll hold uh, this one up here and the other one that I did with the um, Nouveau and you can just see it sparkles differently. They both sparkle beautifully but they do sparkle just a little bit differently. So here's the one with Nuvo, and you can see it's, it's just subtle. And there's the one with Stickles. And if you can tell the difference, the one with Stickles is just a little bit different kind of glitter. So I love them both. Each has their own place and I use them uh, both a lot. Okay, so this one we're gonna use um, is Peach Sorbet. I keep this one around for flowers all the time. It looks like a pink or a peach, like it's it's named, but really it doesn't come out that way. Um, kind of comes out a little more clear or depending on what color that you put it on. Now, when I do my flowers, I squeeze lightly so that I don't get a big glob. I try to keep it really thin. And then I try to make the lines of the flowers like the texture would be, like kind of what I imagine it to be. And sometimes I decide to do just the centers or just the petals. Uh, this one, I think I'm gonna do just the centers since I've got some really good inking going on around there. Let's do this one. We'll do the petals. So when I do the petals, I kind of do the shape of the petals and just kind of spread it around. I, again, I keep it kind of thin. Um, just so you can see, there's not a lot on there. It's really thin. And um, one thing about using Nuvo and Stickles is they both need time to dry. Usually when I'm crafting, I will make Stickles or Nuvo the last thing that I do for my craft session. 
and just let it dry on its own. Um, sometimes that's a, you know, a few hours before I come back. You can use a heat tool, but if you do that, sometimes it might bubble and then you'll have a bubble right in your project. And, and I don't usually typically want that. So I try to just let it dry on its own. Okay, and you can see we have these big long stem. I don't know what they call these on daffodils in the center. Is it the center of the flower or still the stamen? I don't know. Type it in in the comments if you know what that's called on a daffodil. I would love to know. Like I said, we live in daffodil country here, so um, they are commercially grown here in the fields for their bulbs. Um, so while they look absolutely delightful out in the fields. It's so fun to come up onto the field so you can see where they are in the county, even from afar, because it makes this big yellow um, like patch. It almost looks like a patchwork piece of the farmland. Uh, and it's just wonderful. Um, although I have to tell you, sometimes people get a little crazy over their daffodils. They'll stop right in the middle of the road and take pictures. Um, so then you're coming around a corner and there's just this car in the road with a person standing there trying to take pictures of the flowers. Um, not exactly real safe, but they are beautiful to look at. Absolutely stunning. We kind of take it for granted a little bit around here because, um, I mean, we can see them every year. Um, <laughs> so okay so when I get to something like this where there's so many and it's kind of a more abstract look here I'll just go in and just kind of I don't know make little circles where these are see how I'm just kind of circling and once it dries it will look like I went in and touched every single petal and really all I did was just kind of make some little doodles in the area <laughs> And it's really fun. Like I said, once you start with this, it's hard to stop. It's like, oh, where's some more flowers? I need to put some more of this on there. What else needs some Nuvo drops? <laughs> if you have little critters, like those little squirrels and things, it is really fun to use some of the clear on their eyes. Um, it really makes their eyes pop. Not out of their heads, but just makes them look real, like they're looking right at you from the paper. Okay, so here we go. We'll just do this. So much fun. And see where all these little yellow things are back here. We can kind of tell they're flowers. We'll just kind of do a few little dots back there. One over here. Maybe some down here. Now, I don't think all of these are daffodils, but that's all right. They're all kind of in the same grouping, so we'll just go with it. Okay, so let's do these ones. And then once they dry, we'll move on to something else because there is so many fun things we can do with daffodils that are bright and shabby. And I have been working on this wonderful lap book for this project. So I'll show you that at the end to let you see how it's progressing. I have been having so much fun. I haven't made a lap book in a lot of years. And um, when I made them before, I made them for little kids because my girls were little. And now my youngest daughter is 21 and I have grandbabies. Uh, my oldest grandbaby will be two here in just a couple days. So super fun. And it's interesting how fast time has gone. Everybody told me the time would fly by and I had no idea no idea in the moment it doesn't feel like it will <laughs> oh look at this one down here at the bottom we can't forget that one okay and then there's one more and the trick is to try to find a room for all these things to dry in your space okay here we go just do this last one. Now, sometimes I go in and I do um, all the blades of grass, like uh, in this bundle here, I might do all the blades of grass. Um, sometimes I do just one thing, like maybe I'll just do the petals on this. Um, sometimes if I'm really feeling like I need to Nuvo the world, then I'll do it all. <laughs> There's really no right or wrong, just whatever you're feeling. 
especially once it dries. If you feel like, all right, that was fun and interesting, maybe I wanna do some more, then just go for it. That's what I say. Do what makes you happy. And don't worry if you mess it up in the end and you think, gosh, that's maybe that's too much. The beauty of these digitals is you can always print it again. So I think that is uh, really helped. Like Pam from the Paper Outpost says to craft with reckless abandon. And I think when you craft with digitals, it's a lot easier to do that because you're not as worried about, gosh, if I mess up this paper, I don't have any more. <laughs> okay, let's put a little on this little piece that I don't know what it's called. There we go. All right, so we can see how that looks there. And then I'm going to go ahead and let these dry and I'll be back with you to show you uh, the next way I'm going to use some of these. So while our pieces are drying, I brought you into my splat box here. I've used my die cuts and cut out some file folders. There are some file folders uh, in the digital kit, which you can use as well. Uh, I just thought these would be a great base to get us going here. These ones are not in good shape, so they missed a little bit here. Um, probably from where I tore them out. So I don't know how many we'll need. We'll just do a couple more. Now I'm going to use some Distress uh, Spray Stain and also some Distress Mica Stain. Now you don't have to shake the spray stain, but the mica you do. And the way you need to know, the way you can tell if you need to shake it, is if you look at this stain, there's not any stuff hanging out on the bottom of the bottle. So this one, there is that all that mica is down there. And if you want to get all that goodness, you want to give it a good shake um, until it all mixes up at the bottom here. So see how we've got it all nice and clear. We're good to spray. I like to use my splat box because if you don't, all that splat really goes everywhere. <laughs> all right. And antique linen is a great color for a more shabby style. You might also use it if you're going to do um, some grungy fun, but we're not talking about grunge today. I definitely think I lean more towards the grunge. <laughs> I just love it. I love coffee dyed things. I love ink dyed things and ink sprayed things and all the things. All right. But we can go bright and fun as well. Give this a spritz. Looks like I still got one that's ripped there. <laughs> And this is just old vintage book page, so it's not very thick and it is going to seep through. So it's going to stain on both sides. Just something to know if you've never worked with this uh, type of paper before. Um, so be prepared for that. I like to uh, spray these before I decide to use them uh, as a complete unit. If I forgot to splat or something, um, I will just have to know that whatever I'm spraying will leak through onto the other side. Okay, and it's always a good idea to wipe off these little nozzles when you're done using them. And I'm going to use just a little bit of this mica. We'll try and mix it back up in case if anything has settled there. Now some sprayers, you just, you never know what you're going to get. Some of them spray little spritz like that and some of them just like kind of broad out um, spray the whole thing down. Now this one's going to have that little bit of mica shimmer and I love that. And if you spritz it, you can kind of stack them together a little bit, share some of that mica, uh, however you want to do it. And that's a little overpowering for our antique linen, but that's okay. It is doing exactly what I want it to do. It's covering up that book page because I don't want that to be the focal of our file folder. Okay, we're going to give it a little bit of a dry. Then we'll be back to assemble. Okay, so there's still a little bit uh, damp. Need to dry just a touch more, but that's okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and glue a couple of them together. One thing to note when you die cut this way, I did just die cut with the file folder here, is that when you fold it in half, one side is going to be right side up, the other side is going to be upside down. I don't care about that so much because I am going to cover it anyways. And this book page is just a substrate and also background noise is all I'm using it for. So what I want to do is fold these in half and I'm going to go ahead and glue them together. And we can glue it with a pocket here. Um, us junk journalers always love to have pockets. So if we want a pocket, I'm going to go ahead and glue right here where this tab is and around. And I'm going to glue the bottom down here too. Then I'm going to come up and I'm going to leave this area without glue and no glue in the center. Um, I, I suppose we could glue right here just to keep it a little more secure, 
um, but we want to keep that area where our pocket will be open without glue. And I like glue that gives me a second just because of things that happen like that. <laughs> I like to be able to remove it and put it back together. Um, there we go. And the Barely Art glue seems to give me the best of both worlds. I, it dries quickly, but not so quickly that I can't have a second to rearrange. Okay, so then what we're going to do, let's go ahead and glue this other one together too. And then uh, we'll just make a couple of these. These will be a really fun addition to my lap book. I'll turn on the hot glue so I can glue some lace here. Ooh, look at this one. This one's all shredded and torn up gonna need to add something there it looks a little more rustic than uh shabby chic but that's all right um, we will hide some of that we'll put some lace there and again we're gonna glue in the same places now i'm just doing this because um my paper is thin it's vintage book page if your paper is thicker maybe you use some cardstock uh maybe you don't like using book page that's okay too um it will be a little thicker. So there's my pocket right there. We could make a pocket back here if we wanted to as well. That would be another pocket. Um, or we can just leave it simply like this and it makes its own little booklet, which I kind of like. All right, we'll glue these last couple of ones together. These ones are pretty good um, on their own. They're all whole, look at that. Yay, I did a good job on these ones. <laughs> one, okay. Here we go. This one um, I've got turned a little differently, so that'll be great. And what I mean by that is my tab is in a different position than the other ones. As far as the uh, upright uh, portion of the uh, print goes. But like I said, I'm not too worried about the print. We're going to cover that up anyways. If you don't want to do a file folder like this, you can use the ones that are in the kit, or you could also use uh, these beautiful envelopes that are in there as well. So we could go ahead and um, let's glue this closed. We'll, we'll put this together. Sometimes I don't always glue them together because I'm not sure if I want to use them as a little piece of like a flip flap or if I actually want to use them as an envelope. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and use this one as an envelope. They are beautiful. And you can even glue these in as a pocket as well, but then you would miss out on this wonderful image on the back. So we'll leave it like that. Let's go ahead and um, we could on here make this a pocket. Uh, that one's gonna be a problem because it's got that missing spot right there. Let's put a piece of lace there as soon as my Ryobi heats up. So let's do another one first. Uh, that's another pocket one. Here we go. Here is the uh, one that I want to use. Now, I can still see all this book page around here. So what I might want to do is add some scripty font over that. And you can use any old scripty font. Um, I keep one on my book block or on my, my uh, stamping block here. And I think scripty font is still very shabby chic because... It just adds to that softness, that soft feel of um, not necessarily vintage. Shabby Chic can be vintage as well. Um, I think in a little more of a whitewashed way though. Okay, so let's put this on here and we'll block out some of this. Another way to do the same thing here, I think my archival ink is getting dry, um, might be to use some white gesso. And if this doesn't pan out, we will try that next. There we go, that's a little better. Uh, white gesso can just add to um, the edges there and kind of soften it a little bit in a little more of a shabby way, but I do like this um, scripty font as well. We'll mostly focus on the edges here because that's what we're gonna see and it doesn't really matter what's on the inside because we're not gonna see that as much. So let's do another one here. And I love the use of this mica spray. There we go. We've got some of that beautiful scripty font there at the top. Again, not trying to focus on any of the words that are in here or that are happening in there. So, okay, let's just continue making a cute little booklet with our delightful daffodils. 
And of course, we can use all the lace that we want to our shabby heart's content. And I did have a bunch of lace out here, but can I find it? Of course not. All right, I've got some beautiful flowers to accent with as well. Here we go, here's some lace. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this on this whole strip down here. And then we'll put one of these. Look how beautiful that is. I love that. Delightful, right? And our daffodils are just popping. Look at all that texture. It's absolutely wonderful. Now you can leave a little extra of the lace to hang over the edge if you want to, or you can just cut it to uh, the size of your project. Okay. So I like to use hot glue for my lace and my ribbons. You, of course, can use Fabri-Tac or whatever it is that you like to use. Hot glue dries quickly and never lets me down. So knock on wood and glass and all the things. Um, hopefully it'll just keep doing what it's doing. <laughs> all right, there we go. And we could put this just a little bit under here so it's peeking out. Or I kind of liked it layered over there. So we'll just go ahead and layer. Uh, we could make this a pocket, but since it's on the cover here, I'm just going to go ahead and glue it down. Oops. And I'm going to be um, a little more forthcoming with all the glue because it's got to stick over that lace. And I might even put just a little dab of hot glue uh, over there if it doesn't seem to be sticking. Oops. There we go. And then on the inside, we have those little pockets. Where did they go, little pockets? Here we go. We can put one of this right here. And you can still see that. So let's go ahead and use some gesso and we'll just go ahead and block those uh, little pieces of script right on out of our way. This is just heavy gesso. I like to use the Prima brand. Uh, it does make a difference to me which ones that I use. Um, I've tried several different brands and this one seems to be my favorite. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and just kind of rub it in the background there. I don't wanna cover up my mica stain, so I'm gonna try not to get it right there, but I just kinda wanna blur out these words. I don't really need to know what it says and so forth so we'll just go ahead and put that there and we'll do the same thing on this side and you can uh, brush it in with your finger you um, i don't like to put my finger into the jar um, so i try to use a silicone brush or a uh, palette knife or something of the sort even a little plastic spoon would work wonders Okay, so now we so have to let our gesso dried in here. Now we can continue decorating the inside and we can decide if we want this to be a little booklet or if we want to glue those together and just have it be a file folder. I'm going to go ahead and I have taken these in a um, previous crafting session. This is the one where we just put some Nuvo on uh, and inked all of these and cut these out. I kept the three tags together so that that way I can make a fun little flip. And inside of my file folder here, I'm going to go ahead and glue this tag to the base, but we're going to leave this part open like a pocket. And we could even put a little pocket notch in there. So we'll do that before we glue it down. Just go ahead and put a little notch right there. Oh, I did it backwards. Oh, of course. It's been that kind of day, guys. <laughs> um, let's glue it over here, and then we can still have our pocket. That was what I meant to do. Of course it was. <laughs> This little tag right in there and then we can stencil over here we could use this for a little bit of some journaling and of course we can put a little tag or something in here 
Now remember, we may be able to see this on the other side of our file folder. So if you are wanting it to do that, that's great. It can make it look like it's another little tab right there. I think that looks really pretty. And we could put a little paper clip up here just to hold that all together. And we could put another little image over here. Where were my little pockets? Um, actually, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and glue these together so that they are uh, a little more reinforced. And then I'm gonna add a little um, coin envelope as a fun little flip. So we're gonna have all kinds of cute little flips. We're just gonna glue that closed. And we'll put some glue right here. And this will just come right into our file folder and be a sweet little flip. We'll go ahead and put uh, one of our images here. We've got our delightful daffodils. Maybe this is uh, the gardener's little journal all about file folders. Let's put some ink on there just so that it's uh, cohesive and goes with everything else we've got going. We could also add a little piece of lace behind there too, just to make it that much more shabby. Just go ahead and ink the edge right here. There we go. And I think this picture goes really good right there. We'll have our fun little daffodil, delightful daffodil file folder. And one thing I definitely like to do to my file folders when they are all closed up like this, this makes a fun little booklet. I like to put some eyelets in there. If you hadn't already guessed that, I am a metal girl. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Use my crocodile. I'm going to put three little holes. And they're a little wonky, and that's okay. And then we'll go ahead and set our eyelet. I've got these cute little yellow eyelets. These are the eighth inch size. They're not quite daffodils, but they definitely go. Setting on the crocodile is C3, which is recommended by We Are Memory Keepers for, oops, that's a purple one, <laughs> for smaller eyelets, for the eighth inch eyelets. There we go. And we'll do one last one. Like I said, again, a little wonky, but that's all right. Our whole little file folder is a little bit wonky. If you didn't want them to be wonky, you could definitely use the depth guide setter on the crocodile, and they would have all been right in a row. So that is super cute. I love it. Let's go ahead and do one more, and then we will uh, take a look at what we've created. Again, the ones on this little envelope, you could easily decorate with all the things as well. Let's put our little boots and uh, this little daffodil here. Oh, how sweet is that? I like this behind there, I think. Just like that. We don't need a lot to uh, decorate this little envelope. I love the little dots of glitter. And I love that Stickles gives you the chance to play with glitter without making a mess. <laughs> I don't mind the mess of glitter, but I know so many people do. So, all right, there we go. There is our Nuvo and our glitter, our Stickles glitter on there. And that just, again, um, helps decorate it just a little bit. If we move this down, we could even let it be a closure for, for the envelope itself. It could just stuck under there. All right, hopefully it doesn't glue, but there we go. Now you can see, then you can just flip it up. You could even do that with the boots if we don't let that dry. I always forget about making a closure, but that is definitely one thing you can do with your envelopes. Okay, let's use another one of these file folders, this one here. And I wanna put this 
I think these are gonna go just perfectly. We'll go ahead and do another strip of that lace because I thought it was super pretty and it's definitely very shabby. So let's go ahead and it's really easy. Again, it's nice when you can use the same material or technique and get different looks out of it. All right, we're gonna squish that lace right into there before it dries, the glue. There we go. Let's go ahead and put our picture on here. I love that. See, we've got those cute little blue flowers in there too. I've picked up on those. I found some cute little blue flowers in my stash and I may put those somewhere. Um, definitely very shabby if you are able to uh, do the, the flowers and just focus on kind of the frilly fun of it all. In full disclosure, I don't really worry too much about what uh, style I craft in. I just kind of craft and don't let anything block my creativity. So if you don't know what style you are working in, that's okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Uh, okay, here, where did my pocket go? I wanted to, this, this one, there it is. And I've got the gesso there. So it's kind of blanking out that part in the back. And this is a pocket from the kit. So if you, um, trust me, don't worry. If you purchase the add-on kits to the journal kits, you will get so much ephemera. Your books will be overflowing and it will be fabulous. You'll be so inspired and these images are just absolutely stunning. Okay. Now we can leave it just like it is. I think it's very beautiful. We could add some more lace. We could add some more ribbon. We could add some accents. I do want it to be able to close flat. So let's see if one of my little tags will fit in here. These are just some tags that I printed out with the uh, a kit background piece. I printed them onto some business card paper and I'm kind of hoping they'll fit in this pocket. There we go. Perfection. And of course we could put one of our cute little tabs from the kit. I just saw one somewhere on our tag right here. Um, although I do have that little hole there, which I kind of like. Um, we could put a little piece of lace there. We could put, we'll put one of this little piece of trim here. This is so pretty and um, a little shabby as well. So let's just put a little piece of this floral trim right through here. And then we can just put a little dollop of glue. To hold it together. Perfect. Okay, so you see, using uh, Nuvo Drops can definitely add some bright cheer to your projects. And using white gesso can be a way to help bring in some shabbiness as well as some lace there. I love that. And um, just, you know, using bright and cheery accents can also help your projects uh, become a little more uh, shabby as well. So here is the cover of my lap book and you can see I've got all these beautiful florals and some fun lace and then I absolutely love this little hedgie right down there. We've got our daffodils down here. I will go ahead and nuvo those now that I've done the video. And also um, I'm going to go ahead and add a few daffodils. So one other way you can stay in the bright and shabby mode is by doing some spring floral trims. Uh, these are just little picks that I got from my local craft store. Uh, they were relatively inexpensive. They were half off of $3.99 for all of these. Um, you can also pick them up at Dollar Tree or places like that. So um, I usually start by taking them apart. The scissors that I use are Fiskars uh, snips and they are designed to cut through all kinds of more sturdy things like uh, thin metal and wire and that kind of thing. So I'm not afraid to trim these little picks. 
uh, that way. Usually they just come right off, but they are not doing that today. Um, here we go. I don't know how many I'm going to put on there, but I'm just going to cut a few of them off here and add them to my stash. I want some of these white ones. Look how beautiful that's going to be. I am loving it already. And I think I just want to add a few little clusters um, down the side here. And then I also have these little flowers, which you can spray these with your distress inks um, as well, but I think I just want a few little pops of blue and maybe a few little white ones as well. So let's finish trimming these off. I like to trim them off as flat as I can, um, especially if I'm using them inside the journal. And sometimes when you trim them, that also gets rid of this metal piece. Um, I don't always worry about that so much. If it comes out, it comes out. But I would kind of like to keep it here in the daffodils because the daffodils always have that little center piece. And I'm going to try to mix up the, whoops, mix up the white and yellow just a little bit here. And of course, I'm going to use hot glue, but you can use any glue that you feel will hold uh, these dimensional pieces. Collage medium would probably work really good. It doesn't dry as quickly though. Um, so again, that's why I usually default to hot glue just because it's a quicker drying time. Now I'm trying to decide if I want to go all the way up or just make a little cluster down here in the bottom. I think the little cluster is where I'm leaning towards. Uh, let me turn it so you can see a little better. There we go. This lap book is ginormous. Maybe it will pop in a couple little blue flowers. And again, I want to keep those as short as I can. And we'll just glue these down. Now the eye likes things in threes, so I will do three little flowers here and um, three, da three daffodils, three little blue flowers. And I think maybe that's it uh, because we've got a little bit of white here from this white daffodil. So let's try and glue these down. Do I want to put, maybe we'll put the white one right here so it's kind of center. I like that. Yeah. All right. Let's glue it. Don't overthink it. Just glue it down. And we may have to glue down um, the center of this as well since we took out the piece that was holding it all together. Watch your fingers if you're using hot glue because it is, well, hot. All right. Oh, get all those little pieces that I cut out of there. I think this is a great addition to the cover of this lap book. I was trying to decide if I really wanted to put much on there or if I just wanted to leave it flat. But I think a little bit of dimension and a little bit of pop from these flowers is just what it needed. Maybe I should be using some tweezers. That little piece does not want to stay. Let's see. There we go. Needed just a little more oomph than I was giving it there. <laughs> This one kind of moved since I was pulling on it. There we go. That's a lot better. And we'll put our last little blue flower right down in there. Now, of course, I just got glue strings all over everywhere. And I know some people don't like using hot glue because of that. You can, of course, use your heat tool to just go ahead and heat those off. Just make sure you don't heat your flowers off as well. So just a quick little with your heat tool. And I'll take those little lines out of there, um, those glue strings. Or you can just kind of do like I did and just brush them away. Okay, so there we go. We've got some delightful daffodils in a bright and shabby way here on the 
front cover of my lap book and I love it. I think just this little cluster was just enough. And then we also explored using some Nuvo and stickles and gesso and lace and some fun little embellishments. I did put my cute little shabby brads on there as well. And of course, the more trims you can put on something shabby, the better. So add all the lace you want. I give you permission for sure. And uh, have fun with flowers and sprays and gessos and all the things. And don't forget to try out Nuvo Drops if you haven't tried them already. Huge thank you to Rachel from Rachel Bella Crafts for organizing this wonderful collaboration. And another huge thank you to Rachel from Rachel Bella Crafts and to Angela Kerr for all these beautiful designs. With Without them, we wouldn't have uh, this beautiful imagery to play with in this collaboration. If you haven't checked out all of the creatives in this complete complete huge and wonderful see i'm speechless um collaboration you have to check them out even if you are past april 15th you can still replay their videos you can save their videos you can get so much inspiration and so much fun in crafting uh just by watching so definitely check them out there's a playlist on rachel bella crafts uh channel you can also check the link tree for all the details down below and again a huge thank you to you thank you so much for helping us all grow and for watching